let's see, who, who has the Lord brought to our church this Friday? There's always some exciting uh, stories to hear, some exciting people to meet. And so when I got here first thing on Friday morning, I, instead of going right to the gym, I thought, I want to see how the, how the front entryway is coming. You know, it's one of our projects we've been working on. We've got a whole new flooring coming in. They're painting the walls and such. And I came up, there's these two guys that are painting, uh, Gaston and, and Ross. And I just, you know, I'm a pastor here in my church. Let's talk about God for a moment, right? And so we get talking about Jesus. And man, they start sharing their stories and their encounters with Jesus. And it really starts to touch my heart. I get a little weepy because they're sharing how uh, they had been uh, steeped in drugs and alcohol. And not just marijuana, but cocaine, alcoholism. Just they were out of control, out, out of uh, control in their lives. And uh, anyhow, they, uh, they were rescued by Jesus. They, they met at the same... Uh, oh, sorry, Kejo, I'm off my notes already. Yes, this is the right picture for the story. So they, uh, they had... Uh, totally had their lives changed by Jesus. This one guy, Gaston, he had been 30 years uh, fighting with cocaine addiction. And he'd been through programs, he'd been to uh, Ridgewood many times, 17 plus times. But it was when he met Jesus, everything changed. And I said, I, I need you to come share your story at Soul Food. So they both came and they both gave their testimonies. And it's one of those funny things. Usually it's soul food on Friday. You know, people show up, you know, there's like 10, maybe 8 or 9 people here for the devotional. Sometimes there's 12. This time there was like 25, 30 that showed up early. You could just see the hand of God drawing people in. And so these two guys shared their story. They shared their testimonies of how God was effective in making real life change in their hearts. And one of them, Gaston, had said this. He said, you know, when I was choosing these, these wrong roads, I, I really felt like I was following the dark side. Mm. And that was a bit of a confirmation. As I was praying and praying and preparing uh, for uh, the service this morning, I recognized that God wants to do something in someone's life this morning. God wants to do something in someone's life this morning. Uh, let's, let's go to uh, slide one for a second. We'll get back on track here. Uh, so on the title screen that was up at the beginning, if it'll come up again, was the famous scene from the, from the first, well, I should say the fourth Star Wars movie, the first one that was ever produced and put on the big screen. Uh, you had Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and they're, they're messing around with the R2-D2 droid, and all of a sudden this, this image of Princess Leia comes up, Obi-Wan Kenobi, our one and only hope. That's not a direct quote, but that's the idea. Our one and only hope. She knew who she was calling out to. And it reminds me of this passage uh, in Matthew chapter 2. You know, the galaxy and things are falling apart around them. And sometimes uh, you have to call to those who can help. So there's, there's this, this passage in Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to read from the NIV. And it's a story that you're probably familiar with. It's a familiar story from the Christmas narrative. And it's from the Magi when they meet the Messiah, or visit the Messiah. I'll begin at uh, verse 2, actually. It says this, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. Disturbance of the force. Mm -hmm. And all, all of Jerusalem with him, word spread quick. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. What's interesting is there's no hesitation in the answer. Why? Because there was a canon of prophecies about the Messiah. There was established prophecies that these are the prophecies that need to be fulfilled if there is to be a Messiah. And everybody knew at that time in that generation, Bethlehem, in Judea. The prophecies in the Old Testament are so specific. The book of Daniel gives you actually weeks. Is this many weeks until the Messiah is born? And they knew it was in this generation. And there was people expectantly waiting. And they knew where? Bethlehem in Judea. 
For this is what the prophet has written. As Matthew 2 goes on, in verses 6 to 8, it, it reports from the prophet, it says, But you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out for them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them, the Magi, to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him too. And we know he had no intention of doing that. So there's a star in the sky. There's this star in the sky. And people had to make a choice. And, and in this choice, you had to take a Herod-type position. And, and Herod, at one point, was a very noble man. He was a, he was a, a general in the Roman army. And he even rescued uh, the Kaiser once, or the Caesar. Uh, rescued him and became uh, very uh, ingratiated with the emperor. And so he was able to you know, become a king of this area of, of Judea. But he ended up going totally insane killing his family members. He became a very vile man. You could say in a lot of ways, he totally bought in to the dark side. And when he saw this light in the sky or heard about this light, he decided he was going to oppose it. He was going to fight it. And yet in the same story, you have the wise men. And when the wise men see this light, they decide to do something exact opposite. When we saw this light, we, saw it, we decided to come and worship, to submit ourselves to the light. You know, I, I think it's pretty clear, if I read my Bible, and I do, the Bible doesn't shy away from the fact that there is a dark side. It doesn't shy away at all. I'm going to ask my friend Vader if he would... Uh, if you'd mind joining me for the service. He's a little weak right now. He's not strong on the dark side. Give him a moment and he'll... So the Bible doesn't shy away from the fact that there's a dark side. Deuteronomy 18 talks about witchcraft and sorcery. And as a pastor in my own Christian walk, I've seen this stuff. I mean, it's funny, sometimes Christians would say, oh, Star Wars, the forest, ew, evil. No, 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 I've seen real stuff. That's imagination. There's a very big difference, okay? There's a very big difference. You can watch the movie Star Wars, and, you know, it doesn't affect your soul, but you can be involved in witchcraft or these things, and it affects your soul. But yet, there's another kind of dark side. Remember, I was telling you about the two gentlemen who had given themselves over to cocaine, to alcohol, to different kinds of drugs. And, you know, what happens? Why, why does somebody even join the dark side? This is kind of funny, right? Like, there's all these, these things in the internet, join the dark side, right? We have cookies, or this, these different things they try and, and they try and, and get you to join their side or their way of thinking. I find with what's appealing about the dark side, why anybody in their right mind would ever choose a dark side kind of thing, well, it looks powerful. It looks into, I mean, this thing's not intimidating, but someone in real life that's six foot four wearing body armor and has a lightsaber that can like, you know, cut things up like a turkey at Thanksgiving. It looks powerful, it looks intimidating. And sometimes when people are powerless, they're drawn to things that are powerful. You know, we, sometimes we look at the ISIS situation and think, oh, they're all crazy. Well, honestly, what happens is a lot of times is powerless people don't, aren't given a choice. It's join or die. Or maybe they see it as their only way of having some sort of power. Sometimes about the dark side is it looks more rewarding. Like this instant gratification. You know, in the movie Star Wars, the, the dark side guys get this lightning. Wow! And it looks powerful. Or they can, like, you know, use the pools and you can't breathe anymore. Or it looks immediately like there's rewards. You know? It looks cool. It seems to have beauty. And it tries to dictate what that is, what beauty is. It seems easy. 
You know, if I can get strong and I can do whatever I want, you know, it's kind of rooted in selfishness, the dark side. If I can just get, if I can be powerful enough, I can get what I want. I can take and make it mine. You know, you know, those people in our congregation, you know, that are, are the past, you know, that may have been the way you've lived, and you know where it leaves you. It leaves you empty. You know, it seems right. There's nothing trickier about the dark side. And I don't just mean the dark side of the force in the movies, but I mean in real life. Right? This, this dark temptation kind of things. Half-truths. It deals in half-truths, and, and it kind of leads you leads you away. Listen to what the Bible says about Lucifer. Do you know who Lucifer is? He's Satan, the devil. Ezekiel 28, 13, and 19 describes him this way. And it's pretty neat. It says, you were in Eden. Yeah, you know he was in Eden. The garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Whether it was jewelry or whether it was physically on him, we're not sure. Carnelian. Chrysolite, and emerald, topaz, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, if I said that right, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. And so we have at the foundation of Satan this beautiful creature. But then there's this one key word in Ezekiel. It says, until. It says, until. Until wickedness was found in you. Interesting. Not placed, not put there by God, but found in you. Through your widespread spread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian chair, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to earth. Let's go to slide six. It's a trap. This is a very famous Star Wars line. Uh, from the second movie, uh, the animal Akbar at the bottom says, It's a trap! And they suddenly realize the Death Star is activated. Also, the top part is Hanalea. This is someone adding something. Says, you don't have to give me anything for Christmas. It's a trap! Husbands, Christmas is coming. Countdown is on. But the dark side is a trap. The lies of the enemy, the things that he tries to tempt you with in your lifestyle, it's a trap. It's a lie. It promises you, what's that term? Sweet nothings. Mm -hmm. Sweet nothings. Man, it sounds good, but I know you're, you're not promising me anything. When Satan comes to Jesus and tempts him in that famous passage, uh, in his, when he first starts his ministry, all Satan can do to Jesus, he says, if you will lie down and prostrate yourself before mm -hmm. me, I'll make you king of this world. Notice, he couldn't make Jesus do anything. He can't make you do anything. All he does is he whispers. He promises you the world, but it's a lie. See, Ezekiel tells us that he perverts the truth. He perverts wisdom. He twists it. And should you choose to follow the dark side of your life, you're really forfeiting your life, your quality of life. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes we think, well, it's my choice and my choice alone. But there's probably not a person in the room who doesn't realize that when someone follows a dark path, it affects everyone around you. It really does. It will make you its slave. It promises you freedom and then covers you in shackles. It will abuse you. It will throw you away. It will use you. The only value it has for you is it hurts others when you're surrendered to it. Hmm. Second Corinthians in the New Testament, Paul says, In whom the God of this world, and he's speaking about Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So Satan has blinded people. We're, because of the choices of Adam and Eve in the, in the Garden of Eden, we're born into the kingdom of darkness. But when we see the light of Christ, 
At Christmas time, we think of this, uh, the, the star that the wise men followed. When we have this opportunity to come out of the kingdom of darkness, there's a light that shone. It says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the men, or the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, God sends his light. And it's a glimpse of truth, and it resonates in our heart. Resonates in our heart. You know, there's in the Star Wars movies, there's this other fella. And I can remember my mom, back in the day when Mattel used to make the action figures, the Star Wars action figures, getting this guy's action figure was a nightmare. I think she had to take some Taekwondo before she was able to go into the malls and, and get us these, these Yoda action figures. Here he comes. The light side strong today? That's good. Don't let me down, Yoda. They survived the float, so. <laughs> Thank you, Yoda, for joining us. Listen to the difference between these two passages. Isaiah 14, 12 to 16, talk about the dark side. How you have fallen from heaven. One of the titles of Satan, morning star, son of the dawn. Once upon a time and light for good, fallen and extinguished, now Prince of Darkness. But then we think of that Matthew chapter 2 passage where the wise men said, when we saw his star rise, we decided we would come and we would worship him. Not, don't, please don't leave here worshiping Yoda. That is just a prop to help me <laughs> point to Jesus. The wise men, when they saw the light, left darkness and chased after it. There's such a difference. It looks powerful. The light side is powerful. I like what he says here about Jedi. No, not Jedi, but he says, to be a Jedi is to face the truth and to choose. Give off light or darkness. Be a candle or the night. It looks powerful. Is powerful. Looks rewarding is rewarding. When you chase after Jesus, you're coming into a whole new realm. It doesn't just look rewarding to follow Jesus. It is rewarding to follow Jesus. When you get on your knees and pray, he may not answer the way you want him to, but you are tapping into a very powerful being, God. Tries to define beauty and to look cool. That's Yoda. He's not really beautiful. But the light, the light of Christ is beautiful. It's so beautiful you can recognize it in strangers. It is the definition of beauty. Seems easy, quick fix, leads to shackles in your life. Becoming a Christian, following after Jesus, following the light that God has put in front of us is easy. But it promises that life will have its difficulties. But God will walk through you, or with you, through those things. The dark side of life, it seems right because it's based on half-truths. But when you come to the light of Christ, you realize that it is the truth. It's foundational, it's basic, and it resonates. And so there comes this, this time in our lives where we have to recognize that there is an eternal question placed before mankind. There's this question that's placed, it exists, and today it's not me asking you, but it's me dusting off the question and saying, shining some light on it for you. We've been born into darkness. <laughs> and when we see the light of Christ in all its splendor and glory, there's a choice that is made. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 Moses is talking to the people, talking about choosing the light side or the dark side of life. Choosing Christ or choosing the world, so to speak. So says, see, I have put, set before you today life and good, death and evil, and I would add my own light or dark. And he goes on saying, therefore, choose life. Choose light. Choose the light of Christ. 
question is not whether you're going to be a good boy or girl this week. I think religious institutions teach that. It's about being good. The eternal question is this. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? And the book of Revelation talks about the final judgment. And it asks the simple question. There's these books. It says there's the Lamb's book of life and books. The Lamb's book of life is anyone who has called out to Jesus and said, Jesus Christ, I choose the light side. I choose you. When you choose Christ, there is this instant transformation in your spirit. And you are saved. But then there's this journey that begins with your soul. And it's one step at a time. Maybe it's three steps back. Maybe it's years of backsliddenness or addiction or problems. But God will walk with you in that. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. At the end of days, when we face the judgment, the one question that you need to have the answer to is, is your name in the Lamb's book of life? And can anything erase your name out of that? Let me clear that up for you right now. Nothing can erase your name out of the Lamb's book of life because when your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, it's written in the blood of the cross. Signed, sealed, delivered. Because, think about it. When you invite Jesus Christ in your life, you are inviting a God not a Hollywood God. You're inviting, and I hate using the word a God because there is no other God. But you're inviting a God, a divine being, to be part of your life. And when I hear testimonies like my two painter friends, it's such a fresh reminder that God has the ability to affect change. See, my testimony is the fact that God has the power to keep. I haven't tried cocaine, I figured it was a bad idea. Because as a teenager, I had men like those guys stand up and say, listen, don't go there. Don't waste your life like I did. I'm just catching up now. It's the eternal question. Our one and only eternal hope is Jesus Christ. And we put it in Him. There's this, uh, there's this thing, I guess you could say, Maybe you're saying to yourself, is this question for me? Well, I'll tell you right now, if this question is for you, the Holy Spirit will be working on you right now. You will feel His presence in a different kind of way. And we're not promised tomorrow, but it seems to me like there's a, a point in our lives where God will work with us, work with us, work with us, work with us, and then He'll bring this question to your life. And if you're here tomorrow, this morning, and you're feeling that question resonating in your heart, and this is for you this morning, then you can't ignore it. You can't just slough it off because I believe there's someone here this morning, the eternal question has been put before you, and how you answer this morning will affect your life. It seems like these opportunities come once, I don't want to say a decade, but the journey can be rough and it can be a long time before you're in a position to hear the question again. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the truth of the dark side for a moment. Because it's just a bunch of hot air. Revelations. At the end of days, when you face the judgment, if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you've chosen to follow the dark side without giving God a chance in your life. I want you to hear what happens. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 and 12. The great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole, deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. And by the way, it's not a third of the angels in heaven. It's just all the ones that followed him. They don't think it was a third. They don't even know if it was a majority. Just those who followed him. It has come at last. Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. 
The one who accuses them before our God day and night. You wonder where guilt and shame comes from, huh? Mm-hmm. And they have defeated this great servant by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Therefore rejoice, O heavens. And you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger. Knowing that he has a little time. We do have a great enemy here on this earth. But we're not left to fend by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit that Christ, Christ has made available to us. Let's go to our last slide. We have a great Redeemer. Mm-hmm. We have a great Redeemer. My advice to you is make sure that your name is the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm going to give you an opportunity here in just a moment for you to take care of that business, your eternal destination. Because... You don't want to take this lightly because someday we will die. That is a guarantee. We don't know when, but we need to take care of business. Your one and only hope is Jesus Christ. I want to give an opportunity, but I want to have four Canadians. I want to give a private opportunity. If you could all bow your heads for just a moment. Close your eyes. Just give some privacy. I'm not out to embarrass anybody. I'm not out to make anybody a fool. If you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life and, and you feel like you've backslidden, this is not really your moment. You come see me afterwards and we'll talk and we'll get you all set straight with Christ. But if you are here this morning and you have never asked Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and personal Savior, to put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life so that when you face the judgment, you are secure in your faith in who Jesus Christ is. If you have not chosen the light, so to speak, then I want to give you an opportunity right now. If you would like to make sure your name is the Lamb's Book of Life, just slip your hand up right now and I'll see you. I see your hand. If there's anybody else that wants to put their hand up to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Put your hand down, that's good. Yeah, I see. If the Holy Spirit is working on you and you feel His presence, don't wait. I'll ask one more time. If you've never asked Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't know what your eternal situation is, and you want to ask Jesus Christ in your heart, And you just put your hand up right now. And we'll talk. I'll find you after the service and we'll talk. I won't embarrass you. Okay, thank you. Let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us your great and marvelous light. And today you saw that hand go up. And Lord, you've put that person's name in your book of life. Mm -hmm. And Lord, when we stand before you at the judgment time, Mm -hmm. we are covered in your blood. Our names are in the Lamb's book of life. And we will be with you in eternity. Lord, I pray this morning for those who might be struggling with the dark side. Lord, maybe the dark side of life, uh, Satan's tricks or deceits have have come in and, and infiltrated their lives. Lord, I pray for freedom for them. That, Lord, you would break chains of bondages and addictions even this morning in this service. That by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would go and free people even now. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for being an all-powerful God. An all-loving God. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this Christmas season which allows us to remember that you came to rescue us. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you came to be our shepherd to protect us. Mm. We claim your promises of salvation and rescuing in your name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our